First up in today's roundup of cybersecurity tech news, a plot twist that will surprise absolutely no one. A Bluetooth COVID test kit has been discovered to be hackable. Now, this is just concrete proof for me that not everything needs to be computerized just for the sake of it. The Illum COVID-19 home test is a super fancy testing kit. The idea is you do the test as you would any other COVID test by ramming a rod up your nose, then squeezing a sample of your nostril juice onto the test pad. However, this thing isn't going to give you your result on the test itself. You know, the two lines we've all become familiar with. Instead, it connects to your phone via Bluetooth, and then your phone tells you whether you're positive or negative via an app. And we'll get to its hackability in a moment, but the more I researched into this thing, the more I became just shocked and confused at how ridiculous and pointless this whole device even is. So the Signal Path did a teardown video on it, which I'll link below. And it turns out this thing has a standard COVID test strip inside of it, the one that produces those two lines. Then it uses some fancy optics and LEDs to read those two lines before it transmits the result to the app over Bluetooth. Oh, and it's single use, so once it's been used, you just chuck it away. There's no way to switch out the test strip at all. So if I've understood this right, all this does is look at the lines for you, determines whether there's two of them, and then tells you via an app. Then, because it can only be used once, you throw it away. You know, the thing you just spent $26 on. I can't help but feel I'm ranting at this point, but unless I'm missing something, I just find this thing comically pointless. Anyway, um, the hackability, that's why you're here. So by introducing all the technical overheads a device like this needs, Illuma has accidentally introduced a bunch of things that can go wrong. Cybersecurity company F-Secure discovered that the developers forgot to remove some handy debug features from the app before publishing it, and with a rooted Android phone they were able to modify certain variables, as well as a checksum in the test result, before it was processed via the app. They decided to test this method on their marketing manager, who was COVID negative at the time, and using the hacks, they were able to produce a fake positive COVID result, but they could have, of course, made the result negative if the person was, in fact, positive. But hang on a second, this test result looks rather official. Surely results from this widget weren't being accepted as proof of COVID status to enter the US? Um, well, no, they kind of were. But with a catch, if you wanted an official certificate like this one, you had to pay $20 to schedule a video call to have someone watch you take the test to make sure you weren't having someone else take the test for you or something like that. But of course, the person watching you can't tell whether the app itself has been hacked. And to make matters worse, these tests were actually recalled a few months ago for unrelated reasons. It turns out they were producing a high number of false positives. Why exactly? I can't be sure. But I would guess it had nothing to do with the actual test strip, and something more to do with all the overhead of having optics to read a couple of lines. The irony of sticking a bunch of electronics in a COVID test to produce a device that seems to be worse than a bare test strip, whilst also being an order of magnitude more expensive, I just find hilarious. Let me know in the comments, is there something I'm missing here, or is this as ridiculous as it seems? Usually cyber scams aren't very clever, whether the plan is to trick a user into enabling macros on an Excel spreadsheet, or luring someone with the promise of free disk or nitro, scams usually rely on a mix of technical illiteracy and falling for something that's just too good to be true. However, this next scam is ingenious, whilst being remarkably simple. Scammers have been putting QR codes on parking meters in an attempt to trick people into giving them money instead of paying for the actual ticket. How this works kind of speaks for itself. In the dead of night, someone goes around putting stickers on parking meters which tell people to scan the QR code to pay for their parking. In this case, if they did, they were redirected to this site, passportslab.xyz. Not suspicious looking at all. It prompts you to log in and give the scammers your card details. So the FBI has put out a PSA advising people to be wary of these QR codes, and if I'm being honest, I don't think I'd put a QR code under as much scrutiny as I would a link in an email, even though they are essentially both links. Because I receive phishing emails all the time. Cyber criminals are always out to hack YouTube channels and turn them into Elon Musk crypto scam pages. But anyway, when an email has a link, I reckon I do employ a good amount of caution before clicking it. But if I'm outside, you know, in the real world and I have to scan a QR code to pay for a ticket, or to check the bus schedule, or something seemingly benign, I really don't think I'd be as careful as if I was clicking a link in an email. Though now I will definitely be more careful though, and you should too. A VPN company has been completely shut down in a joint operation with various law enforcement agencies worldwide. Now, VPNs aren't illegal in of themselves, but this VPN company was slightly different in that they advertised their services on the dark web to cyber criminals as a way to stay hidden when doing things that they probably shouldn't. 
The fact that cybercriminals will happily use services like VPNs which are directly marketed to them just never ceases to amaze me. It's not a smart move for a miscreant to outsource their OPSEC to a company which is known for providing VPNs to criminals. That's like trying to hide a sandwich from a seagull by putting it in a hamper full of food. It might work for a while, but you're just giving the seagulls more of a reason to find a way into the box of treats. The seagulls in this case being the authorities, and the sandwich being all the juicy data VPN Lab has on their customers. And funnily enough, a notice on the now seized domain says that the authorities have seized the customer data stored within, so no doubt this data is going to lead to other investigations. I couldn't help but notice that they've edited the VPN Lab logo to make it look like it's on fire and falling apart, and this is new, I haven't seen it before on other seizure pages. Part of me thinks they just got someone on Fiverr to make this edit, but however they did it, it is a nice touch to a landing page that is otherwise slightly boring. This isn't at all the first VPN company I've seen taken down. A site called Double VPN was pwned last year for also catering to cybercriminals. But interestingly, when it comes to the VPN lab takedown, no arrests have yet been made. It's only the infrastructure here that's been seized. This video is sponsored by Linode, who are giving you $100 worth of free cloud computing. Linode is a totally customizable cloud hosting platform. Whether you're looking to quickly spin up a VPN, website, or host a Kubernetes cluster, Linode has you covered. If it runs on Linux, it'll run on Linode. Linode just announced availability of their NVMe block storage, the first alternative cloud provider to officially support this state-of-the-art hardware at no extra cost to their customers. Linode's philosophy is to focus on providing all the tools a developer really needs at competitive prices. Use the link in the description now to claim your free $100. Thanks for watching. Let's see if we can hack the YouTube AI by tickling the like button. Make sure to follow me on the Instagrams for behind the scenes stuff and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.